On Black Friday 2006, Best Buy advertised a steal of a deal for this 56-inch Toshiba, $1,199. And check out this 32-inch for a whopping $799. In 2019, the same size TV could be found for as little as $209 for a 55-inch and just $79 for the 32-inch. And these aren't just regular old TVs. These are smart TVs. They're powerful enough to connect to the internet, stream shows, music, and more. If we're looking at this from a completely analytical perspective, it doesn't really make any sense. Larger TVs, higher resolutions, more capabilities with internet connectivity. It should all add up to be more expensive. Mass production and manufacturing improvements can help bring down costs, and they have over the years. But this is a dramatic drop in price. Generally speaking, you shouldn't be able to get more for less, especially when it comes to tech. So how do TV manufacturers manage to drop the cost of their units so substantially and still make a profit? Well, it's simple. They figured out another revenue stream. TVs have always been kind of expensive. Take this Westinghouse, the first colored TV ever sold starting in 1954. It had a 21-inch screen and cost $1,295. Adjusting for inflation, that same TV would cost over $12,000 if it came out in 2019. This was, admittedly, a luxury product and not at all affordable to the masses, but it didn't stay that way. By 1964, colored TVs were being sold for just $400, or over $3,000 in 2019 bills. Still a luxury product, but a slightly more affordable one. Part of the reason for that price chop is that once manufacturers figured it out, TVs were relatively easy to make. Consumers really only care that they look good and sound decent, so branding, colors, all that stuff didn't matter too much. This also meant that competition was much stiffer, and that helps drive prices down. This trajectory paints a picture that holds up for most TVs throughout history. The coolest, newest TV is extremely expensive, until the companies can get enough fabrication facilities to produce that particular type of television at a level that is cost-effective for them. Then, they drop the prices down just enough to get the masses on board, while still maintaining a high enough profit margin make it valuable for them. This is the way things were for a long time, but it didn't stay that way. In 2007, the New York Times ran an article that suggested that manufacturers make approximately 20% profit margins on each individual TV. Besides Costco, because they had a generous return policy which ended up cutting their margins in half. But in 2019, those profit margins have dropped down to just 6% according to the chief technical officer at Vizio. 6% is minuscule. It's the kind of profit that would be unsustainable in keeping a business alive if that's all you were making. But at a certain point, manufacturers realized that isn't all they needed to be making. They didn't need to get you to spend a lot of money on the TV, they just needed to figure out how to make money once you already had a TV. And if TVs were affordable enough that everyone could get one, then they'd be able to maintain a long-term business. After all, people usually keep their TV for 6.8 years. And so it's better to have a steady stream of revenue than a one-time hit every 6.8 years. Enter smart TVs, the turning point of the industry. For consumers, smart TVs are the most convenient way to go when purchasing a TV. 70% of Americans have one or more streaming services, with smart TVs, those are built in. You don't need to buy a Google Chromecast, Apple TV, or an Amazon Fire Stick. You just get your TV and it's off to the races. You even get YouTube, so you could be watching me on your TV right now. In 2018, 37.2% of households had smart TVs, 16% more than the year before. And this trend is expected to continue growing because smart TVs are cheaper than ever. 
If you've recently been in an electronics store, you know that the only types of TVs that brands are selling these days are smart TVs. So how exactly do they make a steady stream of money after you've already purchased the TV? Well, there are a few ways, but quite simply, they track everything you do. While you're watching the TV, the TV is also watching you. Whether that's launching an app, watching cable, or a streaming service, or even a DVD, the TV knows. It uses automatic content recognition to figure out what you're watching, no matter what you're watching. It reports that data back to the TV manufacturer and to some third-party companies. One study by Northeastern University and Imperial College in London found that almost all TVs sent data to Amazon, Facebook, and Google's ad services. It also found that every TV sends data to Netflix, even if you don't install or even activate the app. TV manufacturers have suggested that they use this collected data to suggest other shows you might like based on what you watch. However, the less bragged about use case is utilizing it to better target ads to you, which they do all the time. To be fair, these manufacturers now explain that some collection is occurring when you enable these options in your settings. They've also come forward to say that your data remains anonymous and that it is possible to turn off or opt out of these trackers. It just requires staying vigilant when setting up your TV and not just okaying through every step of the process. But even with all that, is it really that anonymous? I mean, you're signing into Netflix and your IP address can vaguely give away where you are in the world. So it'd be pretty easy to narrow down who you are if that was something someone really wanted to do. Every day, companies take strides to become more privacy sensitive and forward facing when it comes to the data they're collecting on you. But the only way to take real steps to maintain your privacy is to not connect to the internet and use your smart TV as a dumb TV. But as mentioned earlier, this is just one way smart TVs can be sold cheaply. In an interview with The Verge, Vizio's CTO claims that data collection for ad purposes isn't the crux of their business model. They could sell TVs that don't have any trackers and it wouldn't cripple their business. They've diversified their revenue streams. But if they were to do that, they would have to sell their TVs at a higher cost to offset the losses from not collecting data. Besides trackers, TV manufacturers can continue to earn dollars after the TV is sold by running their own ads. That could be on the splash page when you turn on the TV before switching to your streaming service or cable. Or it could be during one of the many free movies or shows they offer. Partnering with media companies also seems to be a fruitful route. Many smart TVs come preloaded with a set of channels that can be watched for free once the device is connected to the internet. These channels contain high value ads because of their ease of use coming straight out of the box. With these ads, the company that runs the channel makes some money and the TV manufacturer also makes some money. In the last few years, TVs have gotten a lot smarter and a lot cheaper, but all tech companies need to turn a profit. Cheap tech or even free tech is never truly free or cheap. It's just that the transaction that's taking place isn't always a monetary one for you. Data is the new currency. With that, the responsibilities that we take on as consumers have become greater. And like our TVs, we have to become smarter because of it. If you made it this far, thank you so much for checking out this video. Make sure to like and subscribe if you so choose. It really helps us out in creating awesome content like this. If you're looking for more nuance, we've left some links in the description below for the articles that we use when researching this video. And if you're interested in all things tech, you should check out Cheddar's Best of CES special, which you can watch this Friday, January 10th at 9 p.m. on cheddar.com news.